Hunter x Hunter is one of the greatest and most successful Shonen Jump franchises of all time, spawning two anime, two films, a handful of video games, and 400 chapters in the manga, which is a pretty hard and rare feat to accomplish nowadays. The story of Hunter x Hunter's insane beginnings go all the way back to when even One Piece started, to the point that both of these amazing series actually had their pilot anime episodes air on the same day, July 26, 1998 at the Jump Super Anime Tour. Now there aren't that many details concerning this tour, but what we do know was that this was the first time audiences had just a little bit of a taste for One Piece and Hunter x Hunter in the animated form. It was released back when Hunter x Hunter had only 19 chapters, right in the middle of the third phase of the Hunter exam, which honestly is not enough story to be covered for an anime to get picked up. And considering that episodes of an anime can take anywhere between 6 weeks to a couple of months to get animated, that means that they probably started production on this pilot when there was only one or two chapters of Hunter x Hunter out, which means that the staff had little to work with, which is pretty apparent when you watch the pilot. The pilot nowadays just serves as a nice little historical trivia tidbit for Hunter x Hunter, but I really want to spend some time right now to break down the pilot with you all. But you can watch the whole thing on YouTube if you'd like, but I recommend you stay with me. My name is Josue, welcome to the Panic Brothers channel, and let's talk some Hunter x Hunter. Now, if there's just one thing that I really need to get across about this pilot, is that the animation is insanely gorgeous. There's so many shots that just scream how beautiful 90s anime can truly be. Now, I know that Hunter x Hunter eventually had a proper 90s anime that came out about a year after this pilot, and that anime was still really beautiful in its own way, but it just doesn't hit the highs of this one pilot alone. I would have really loved to see an entire Hunter x Hunter series done in this specific style of animation. Credit where credit is due, the pilot was created by Periot, the same guys who made Yu Yu Hakusho, Naruto, the original Bleach, as well as Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War. While Periot nowadays gets a lot of hate for butchering several of their series, back then the studio was no stranger to beautiful and insane animation, and it clearly shows in just this one 25 minute episode. The episode starts off with the food chain of Whale Island getting eaten as we switch over to Gon attempting to capture the master of the swamp using a barrel. Now, Gon's outfit is completely different, which is pretty odd. He wears a blue open shirt with a yellow undershirt, brown shorts, and brown boots. I just don't understand why it couldn't be green, or at the least look like his outfit from the manga. I know there's at least a possibility that the studio had no idea what Gon's color scheme was, but it's still weird how radically different they decided to make Gon's drip look like. But I'm not gonna lie, Gon's fit is kinda clean. Like, I actually kinda mess with it. The pilot has its own little intro sequence, which is a nice callback to the first couple of pages from the manga. We see Gon carrying the Master of the Swamp into town, with so much more detail than that one brief panel in the manga. The town feels so insanely alive with its beautiful architecture, farms outside, and staircases everywhere. The animation staff went extremely hard, drawing every single detail. Now, it's kind of hard to describe what real-world location that this town is based off of, but I'm not gonna lie to you, I really wish I could live here. Gon presents the fish to Mito, who is in the town square. This sequence follows the manga pretty well with the audition that we see Gon drop the hunter application in the mailbox immediately. Gon runs out of the town square and into the forest to have a meal with Kone. In the manga, Kone lunges at Gon from the side, and Gon fishes, while in the pilot, Gon just immediately sits next to Kone instead. Gon stares at a hunter license, which then proceeds into an insanely well-animated kite flashback. This flashback sequence is actually pretty one-to-one -one with the manga, and may honestly be my favorite adaptation of the kite flashback compared to the 1999 and 2011 adaptations. Now this sunset shot is so beautiful. I'm not sure if this is really a translation issue or not, but Kite mentions that both of Gon's parents are alive, as opposed to only Ging which I assume is just an issue of lack of context in the studio's end. The next sequence is also pretty faithful as Gon tells Kone that he's going to become a hunter, in which Kone comes back with all of the forest animals to wish Gon farewell. Now there's something about the way Gon looks like as he's sitting down while Kone walks away that kind of rubs me the wrong way. I'm not really sure why, but Gon reminds me of Cory from Boy Meets World for some reason. <laughs> Like, it just feels like the same energy in this one specific clip. <laughs> Gon runs back home, 
after tripping on nothing <laughs> and somehow changes into his traditional green jacket on the way. Where did that come from? Now, based on the way Mito talks and even how Kite talked about it, hunters are talked about as if it's like a profession like plumbing or an actual wildlife hunter. This sequence is also pretty faithful to the manga as Mito blows up on Gon after getting drunk. Now, you can really feel how messed up Mito is during this entire pilot. And the pilot instantly cuts to when Gon is about to depart. He's not completely in his regular outfit, which means the animation studio actually did know how Gon is supposed to look like. Except he has blue hair. I don't get that part at all. Why the blue hair? Gon still says bye to Mito, but their interaction when she reveals she lied to Gon doesn't happen. All Gon does actually is just happily wave goodbye while Mito yells after him and sheds a tear. The amount of insane detail they added to this shit, by the way, that's barely seen at all in the first couple of chapters is wild to me. In just a matter of seconds, they managed to make this ship feel alive. All in all, the pilot managed to cover the entirety of chapter one in just about 10 minutes. Gon mentions feeling a storm coming, offering an easy transition into the second half of the pilot, which adapts a majority of chapter two. The biggest difference here is that the captain mentions the waters being inhabited by monsters, which is clear set up for later in the episode. The captain also mentions he'll explain the hunter exam an hour after the monsters start attacking. The only monsters we see are these jellyfish creatures. The captain apparently has his own little crew that wine and dines together, and for some reason he has a photo of Ging. The same photo that Ging has back at his home, which just insinuates that Ging likes to print out the same photo of himself, and I guess he gifts it to people. The captain prepares his men and he's ready to admit that this will be the end yet again for this batch of hunters until Leorio and Kodapika show up. Kodapika has brownish hair here, and Leorio at least looks a million times better than he did in chapter 2. They approach the captain who was surprised to see two people survive the rough waters and monsters and ask on the status of the exam while on the deck as opposed to the captain's quarters like the manga. When the captain becomes curious about the rest of the applicants, Leorio and Kodapika reveal that they were overwhelmed by the jellyfish monsters who turned everyone extremely horny. Did they have an did they have an orgy in Hunter Hunter? Leorio notices one last jellyfish has gotten stuck to him until Gon uses his fishing rod to reel it out while revealing that he managed to catch all the jellyfish. Gon keeps his jacket open for this segment. At this point, I feel like the pilot just didn't really know what to do with Gon's outfit. Like, they just hate his clothing, I guess. But at the same time, I hate how much I like what they did with his outfit. Like, his, his fit is also still clean. Gon somehow managed to have more outfits in this pilot alone than probably the entirety of Hunter Hunter. <laughs> the following conversation is pretty one-to-one -one with the manga, with the exception of location, and then things change. This is when the pilot decides to have a couple of creative liberties. A siren shows up completely naked. Gon can apparently talk to animals. The seagulls are the ones that tell him a monster is coming. Not one person is holding the wheel of the ship. Not one person. Not even the captain. How is the captain a captain of a ship if he just... So stupid. Kodapika and Leoro run away to fight just like they do in the manga. The Phantom Troop aren't mentioned here, by the way. Um, probably because they knew they weren't going to go anywhere with it, but still pretty interesting to, to notice. The fight between the two is actually very well animated, while Leorio does flips. What the f- Despite seeing the rest of the ship getting drowned with tons of water, it's still on sight between the two of them, and I really, really respect that. Turns out that Siren from earlier is actually a giant Hydra-like enemy made out of smoke and starts eating everyone. Does that mean that this monster knows Nen? No, I know Nen wasn't a thing by the time that this pilot came out, but the idea of a monster or an animal knowing Nen is actually pretty interesting. It's kind of like how in One Piece, animals can eat devil fruits. So imagine if animals or even like the creatures in the Dark Continent also knew Nen. That's why they're so powerful. Like, that'd be insane. They're probably a lot more in tune with Nen than humans are, right? Unless that theory of humans being Nen beasts is true. In which... 
I'm going on a tangent. Back to the pilot. Let's talk about the pilot. Gon climbs up to the top of the ship to go 1v1 with his Hydra enemy while wielding nothing but a stick. Gon jumps to the monster but gets hit and somehow is able to jump back to the top of the ship. How? Gon should have died. Like, Gon literally should have died. He has no Nen. He is just a regular boy, a human boy in this pilot. He should have died. The Hydra monster has now turned into a giant squid octopus thing as Leorio, Kodafuka, and injured Gon look on. The captain tried to do something against the monster, but we all know this captain ain't gonna do anything. Right before he got attacked, Gon comes in to save the captain from the octopus tentacles. Leorio and Kodafuka save Gon from the water dragon, and they get hit and recoiled. After Gon reconciles the other two, the captain drops some lore, stating that the monster grows to its largest size under a full moon, and the only way to stop it, according to legend, where is this going, is to close its eyes, which will make its magic disappear. Now, this monster has a bunch of eyes, so how, how are they going to do it? While Leorio and Kodapika distract the monster, and by distracting, I mean Leorio just does his flips, while Kodapika takes his robes off and lights it on fire, Gon uses his fishing rod to instantly fly his way to the top of the monster and find its tiny two eyes. But how did he know that there would be tiny eyes? How, wh why did he assume that? How did he know that? Like, how did he, how could he have possibly known that those big orbs on the monster, on the octopus monster, aren't his eyes? How did he just happen to know that those are fake and that his real eyes are these tiny two dots on the top of his head that you were not able to see? Did I miss, did I miss something? I, I know Gon is a smart kid, sure, but he can't be that smart. I don't get that. And then boom, the monster just melts away. Gon reveals the actual size of the monster, which is actually pretty tiny. The captain ends the episode saying he likes the three, and everyone celebrates by tossing Gon in the sky. And then Gon almost eats the squid monster, but instead he threw it back to the ocean. And that's the pilot. Honestly, it's pretty interesting. The animation is goaded and the pacing is so well done. The one obvious difference between this pilot and the events of the manga is uh, whatever happened with that giant sea monster. And that was probably put in more so just to kind of show audience what they can probably expect from the rest of the Hunter x Hunter series. I highly recommend checking out this little slice of Hunter x Hunter history for yourself. It's pretty weird to see a version of Hunter x Hunter that leans more into fan servicey elements. So I'm pretty happy that the regular Hunter x Hunter just dropped that completely. And while it's a shame that we'll never be able to see a full version of Hunter x Hunter with Studio Periyat's involvement, I do think that the eventual creators of the 1999 series, Nippon, did a fantastic and brilliant job adapting Hunter x Hunter as well. You don't really get anything else from this pilot when it comes to just as a fan though. Maybe the kite flashback, which was pretty well done and like I said, the best version of it, uh, is pretty good to see. Um, some more outfits of Gon is pretty cool, but... It really just exists. You get that, you watch it, it's cool, you move on. I wish there was some more trivia or history behind this pilot, but it really was just to show audiences what Hunter x Hunter is, how an anime of it could look like, and what to expect, which is pretty cool in its own way. But obviously I do think that the 2011 Madhouse adaptation is as perfect as you can possibly get with Hunter x Hunter, and so, I think we're all good as a fandom. <laughs> Anyways, please do all the regular YouTube stuff for me. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm planning on doing a bunch more Hunter x Hunter content in the future. So join me along the way. Till then, I'll see ya.